Hello there folks, I'm the Lon Chaney Reviewer. A um, few quick announcements before I get into this main video that I'm talking about today. Um, first off, Silent Film Saturday's episode will be Where East is East, the Lon Chaney film. Uh, the last, I believe the last film that Todd Browning and Chaney worked together. So that's an interesting milestone. Silent Fil uh, Film Saturday episode number 18 uh, will be a... A surprise. It's going to be 4th of July week, so check that out and wait for maybe spoilers and hints. I don't know. Whatever. I'll see how I'm going to do with that. Um, also, I'm going to reveal probably my favorite film of all time sometime this week or next week. Um, as you, If you d don't know, I have a playlist of my other nine favorite movies of all time. I haven't reviewed number one. If you can guess number one, I'll give you a shout out on uh, the, uh, the 18th... Um, Silent Film Saturday episode, which would be kind of cool, I guess. Um, <clears throat> you Also, you can vote for the 19th episode of Silent Film Saturday, still um, until the, the 4th of July, and I'm going to count the votes, and uh, I'm going to review all those films that are on that list anyway, but the first ones that get the highest votes are going to be the ones that are going to be, like, first. So, the 19th episode of Silent Film Saturday can be determined by you guys. Um... You should, um, I'm going to put a link to the poll in the description, and you guys can check that out. Uh, today's episode, I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, December 31st, 2012, I was like, you know what, I need to, I'm, I want to do an interesting IMDb list, so I'm going to do. So I decided I was going to record every new film I saw over the course of 2013. Um, I'm going to include new releases too, like Man of Steel and Iron Man 3. Um, except they're not going to be on this list, upcoming list I'm talking, telling you guys about. Um, what I mean by new films I haven't seen, I, I'll mean films like, for example, I didn't see um, Lawrence of Arabia until this year, basically, when I was on my college winter break. I watched it, and I'm like, this is a magnificent movie, and I put it down. Then I saw, Re I saw Reefer Madness this year for the first time, and boy, that's, that's, a, that's a trip. Um... But I'm going to mention the top 11. Now, I know that sounds cliche because Doug Walker does the top 11 thing, but I just did top 11 because I made a major miscalculation when I was doing this list uh, this list the other day. So I'm going to give you guys this uh, list of the t my, t my 11 favorite films i never seen before um, that I have seen now. So let me give you a few honorable mentions just to start. Lawrence of Arabia being one of them. Great movie, just a supreme epic from David Lean. I'm mainly familiar with his uh, some of his like uh, smaller work, like uh, Brief Encounter. Um, I've I've also seen Doctor Zhivago too, which is okay. But Lawrence of Arabia might be my second favorite um, David Lean film that I've seen. My first being Brief Encounter because I feel it's probably one of the strongest uh, romantic films ever made, and I'll, I might do a review on that eventually because it's a great movie, fantastic uh, rain day movie, rainy day movie. I mean. Um, also, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Pulp Fiction. I've never seen Pulp Fiction. Um, I'm not going to say it's like my favorite film ever or anything. I haven't seen a whole lot of Tarantino's work other than Pulp Fiction. I've only seen like Inglorious Bastards and Django. Um, I'd like to see his other films, but I'm not going to say he's like my number one favorite filmmaker or anything. That's just me. Um, but I like what I've seen from Tarantino. I'm not going to say I hate it. It's just... Not my favorite. If I had to pick one, a few modern filmmakers that I like, I'd probably say Spielberg, Wes Anderson, and after I talk about this list, Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, other honorable mention goes to I'm Still Here, the Joaquin Phoenix documentary. I have to give it to that because it's one of the oddest experiences I've ever seen in my life. I'm not going to say it's a great film or a terrible film. You should check it out once and... Yeah, I think that's enough. Um, and I was lo looking at a list of like the ten actors who went too far into their roles, like Heath Ledger, Daniel Day-Lewis, and they put Joaquin Phoenix as himself on that list because he did the David Letterman interview, convincing everybody he was going to do like you know he was going to have a rap career or hip hop career or whatever. And it was just it's really fascinating to watch a documentary because it's just so weird. Um, but that's those are the honorable mentions. Um, 
I'm going to have a, a link to the um, the real list that I had so you can see what other films I saw this year. I saw other films like uh, uh, Christopher Nolan's first film, Following. I saw the film uh, Insignificance, which is a very good movie. I really enjoyed it myself. I think it's kind of underrated. Um, I saw The Navigator from Buster Keaton, a silent movie. Very, very good. And recently I saw The Temptress with uh, Greta Garbo, or as I like to say, Greta Garbo. Oh my god. Stunning Hollywood beauty. But anyway, I'm going to be talking about my 11 favorite movies that I've never seen before that I saw this year. Number 11, Punch Drunk Love, uh, from Paul Thomas Anderson. It's a really, it's a really nice, uh, unconventional romantic comedy. It's short, it's like 95 minutes. Adam Sandler gives a hell of a performance in this film. And even when I heard from people this is his best performance, I thought, he's Adam Sandler, he can't give a good performance if his life depended on it. And he proves me wrong with this film, it's amazing. Really good performance of this character. It's almost a parody of his characters that he plays in, the, in his movies. He's, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like a lot of his earlier films where he's playing characters who are kind of odd, you know, and how the real world would treat him. So I really like that. That's number 11, Punch Drunk Love from Paul Thomas Anderson. Number 10, Goldfinger. My history of the James, Bo James Bond franchise is rather limited. I've seen all the Daniel Craig movies, which is only three of them, uh, which include Casino Royale, Quantum of the Souls, both of which I thought were okay. Skyfall was awesome. I also saw Die Another, Die Another Day. I thought that was an atro uh, atrocious train wreck. I want to forget about that film now. And Goldfinger, I saw it, and I'm like, this movie's a lot of fun. It's just, it's what I always thought a James Bond movie should have been. I, that's why I've always not really liked the franchise, because the films I watched didn't always speak James Bond to me, but when I watched Goldfinger, I'm like, you know what, this is the James Bond that I ha always had in my imagination. You know, I'm only saying this because I'm not someone who has seen all 23 films of the franchise, so... Uh, if you guys like James Bond, comment below, and I'd like to see uh, if I have any James Bond fans in my audience. I probably do. So, uh, number 10, Goldfinger. Number 9, Playtime from Jacques Tati, uh, famous for film films like Mon Uncle, um, Monsieur Hulot's Holiday. And he plays Monsieur Hulot in this film, in a very expensive, big-budget film, two hours long, that ruined his family fortune, put him in debt for several years, and really tragic, because it's a great movie about, like, technology and being a human being, and a lot of other things. And I, it's in the Criterion Collection. I really recommend it. It's a very, very good film, and I really want to revisit it uh, very soon. So number nine uh, is Playtime from Jacques Tati. Um, number eight is My Man Godfrey. After I watched To Be or Not To Be, I'm like, I have to watch more Carol Lombard. So I decided to watch My Man Godfrey, and I'm just enchanted by Carol Lombard. She was amazing, amazing actress. F died died way too young. Um, I've also seen her in uh, Nothing Sacred, which is also a very good, a pretty good movie too. My Man Godfrey is a really nice uh, screwball comedy where we have uh, William Powell who plays the character of Godfrey. Uh, he's a bum, but there's more to him than meets the eye, and uh, he becomes the butler for Carol Lombard's family. And this is actually the first film in Oscar history to be nominated for all four uh, acting categories, and that's because this was the first year in the Academy history where they introduced the um, the supporting actor categories. Interesting tidbit when you watch the film. It's actually a very good movie. It's really funny. Um, love it. Gotta see it. Uh, that's number eight, My Man Godfrey. Number seven, Wages of Fear. This film had me on the edge of my seat. It's two and a half hours, but it's literally a white knuckle uh, thrill ride. The first hour of the movie is devoted to the character development. So if you didn't, if you walked in this movie blind, you had no idea about the plot. You'd be like, "Where the hell is this movie going?" Then you get to know the characters, and then they tell you that these guys have to carry trucks, lo truckloads of you know explosive uh, material. I, I, it escapes the top of my head at the moment. Um, yeah, I can't think of it at the moment. But basically, it's very explosive stuff, and if anything slight happens to it the truck explodes and they have to stay 30 minutes apart from each other it's really tense it had me on the edge of my seat and this was like 10 o'clock at night when I was like really tired I put it on and I'm like it kept me awake it was just a thrill ride a thrill ride of a movie if you like uh, Diabolique I re recommend you check this out um, Henri Georges Clouseau the director of these two films uh, is often described as the French Hitchcock 
he's a little different because Hitchcock is more humorous, where this where um, Clouseau is much more serious in tone. So check it out. Number seven, uh, Wages of Fear. Number six, Out of the Past. Um, after I saw Robert Mitchum in Night of the Hunter, I wanted to see more Robert Mitchum, so I saw Out of the Past. Wonderful, wonderful noir film. You know, you have the, the hero character who wants to escape his past, but just can't escape his past through a series of events. Wants to start a new life. There's love interests involved. Bittersweet ending. You got Kirk Douglas in the movie. Really nice cinematography. I think it's a great movie. Uh, so that's number six, Out of the Past. Number five, On the Waterfront. Uh, this was recently put in the Criterion Collection in February. Um, one of the best Blu-rays, probably the best Blu-ray I've seen this year. It's a two-disc Blu-ray or three-disc DVD. Has loads of supplemental features, documentaries, commentary track, trailers, of course the packed Criterion booklet. And three different aspect ratio, <clears throat> three different aspect ratios for the film because back in that time, aspect ratios um, you you could screen in different versions like 185 to 1, 166 to 1, uh, 133 to 1. It has all all those, um, and you could check it out for the first time. That's amazing, great movie. Marlon Brando proves once again he's probably one of the greatest actors that ever lived. And I rewatched Superman recently, not, not to get off tangent, and I'm like, you know what? Marlon Brando isn't trying this film, but Marlon Brando not trying is better than most actors trying. I've come to realize that. <laughs> so, you gotta see On the Waterfront, Academy Award winning performance from Marlon Brando. Even if you don't like Ilya Kazan or Bud, Bud Schulberg, you have to see the movie because it's a classic. It's like Birth of a Nation. You know, the movie's racist, but you have to see it eventually. You have to confront the fact that it exists. You can't keep running away from it forever. So, number five, On the Waterfront. Number four, To Be or Not To Be. Um, First film I ever saw with Carol Lombard. She's enchanting in this film. Gorgeous, great uh, comedic actress. Um, Jack Benny's in this film too, and he he's really good as the uh, as her husband. He, he's a Shakespearean actor. He tries to do you know to be or not to be, but he kept he keeps getting interrupted. Keeps keeps getting interrupted. Getting excited about this film because it's so so funny. Uh, basically, you have these Polish actors who have to uh, stop a Nazi spy from giving the list of names of Polish pilots to the to the Gestapo. Very funny movie. Sig Ruben, you remember from uh, Night at the Opera and Day at the Races, and also uh, House of Frankenstein, a uh, German actor, plays concentration camp Erhard, or Colonel Erhard. Really funny character. I love Sig Ruben in this movie. Uh, really funny movie. One of the funniest I've ever seen, personally. Uh, number four, To Be or Not To Be, from Ernst Lubitsch. Uh, number three, There Will Be Blood. Another Paul Thomas Anderson title. This movie has to be one of the finest movies of the 21st century, and it's cynical, it has great performances, great screenplay, great direction, great cinematography, it has everything you want in a movie except a love interest, and yeah, there's a love interest for another character, but it's pointless, and you know, you don't really care about the, the love interest, it's not really a part of the story. What's really part of the story is Daniel Day-Lewis as this ruthless oil man, and his conflict with um, Paul Dano's um, religious, fr fr you know, his religious fraud, and it's a w excellent movie. Two and a half, a great two and a half hour movie. It's Paul Thomas Anderson's There Will Be Blood is number three on my list. Number two, Boogie Nights, another uh, Paul Thomas Anderson film. I got this film for a dollar at a uh, at a live at like a um, I don't want to say it was like a street fair library was selling, selling old videotapes, so I got it recently, popped it in my VHS player, watched it in my uh, entertainment room, fell in love with it, Wa I've watched it a couple times, I really love this movie. Uh, it's basically, you ha it's like the, the rise and fall of the porn industry in like the 70s and 80s. Um, per Burt Reynolds gives a great performance, Julianne Moore is a really, really compelling, really tragic character in this. Uh, William H. Macy is excellent, his character, I really dig his character a lot. Um, Phil Seymour Hoffman's in this movie, and Mark Wahlberg, he gives a great performance in this movie, so good, as this young man, Dirk Diggler, you know, become, trying to become, like, the, a star, basically, like, that's this thing, I want to become a star, and become the best, and it's a really compelling story, and you really feel bad for the characters, even though they're involved in the, you know, porn industry, and they do drugs, and you never think, you know, a compelling movie about the porn industry, you know, that's really... Really awesome. Uh, thank you, Paul Thomas Anderson, for giving us a movie about porn stars that's excellent. Uh, number two, Boogie Nights. Number one, The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp. This movie is almost three hours long. I wish it was three hours longer. 
because it's a very compelling story about these two characters. You have uh, Clive Wincandy, uh, played by um, Roger Livesey, and you have Anton Walbrook's character of Theo Kreschmarch uh, Schuldorf, a German officer. Um, Clive Wincandy is a British officer, and the story revolves around three wars, the Boer War, World War I, World War II, but it doesn't concentrate on the fighting like most war epics do. Uh, it concentrates on the characters and the conflict in between wars. Um, for like the character of Clive Wincandy, I love him so much because he's a very old-fashioned character, and he makes me think of myself. I'm not the type of person who likes to resort to doing stooping to somebody else's level, and he's very much like that. Where he's like, "You, I'd rather lose to the Nazis than do their methods in order to defeat them." And as noble as that is. Um, Anton Walbrook's character knocks some sense into him and just makes him say, like, look, if you don't defeat the Nazis, there will only be a Nazi way. Okay? Get that straight. But other than that conflict, you have these two men who become friends because of a duel, and they fall in love with the same woman. Uh, one of them marries her, the other one doesn't, and it's like a lifelong obsession, almost. Um, once again, um, what is it? Michael Powell and Eric Pressburger, directors of uh, The Red Shoes and uh, Black Narcissus. Of course, beautiful color cinematography, restoration from the Film Foundation, gorgeous, great supplemental features on the new Blu-ray. I recommend you check it out. And my favorite film so far that I've seen this year, The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp. Also, the Blu-ray includes the comic strips that the, um, the political cartoons that Colonel Blimp was based off of, and those are really funny too. Really excellent. Um, so that's about it guys, I hope you liked the video, and uh, if you've seen any of the movies in my top 10 uh, that I've just mentioned, what are you, or top 11, excuse me, what are your thoughts on those movies, or if you haven't seen any movies, are you going to try to check them out or seek them out? Um, and I hope to, I'll see you this Saturday for Silent Film Saturday, where I'll be discussing Where East is East, starring Lon Chaney Sr. in one of his final roles. I'll see you this week.